Good afternoon, everyone. Hope everyone had a good Lord's Day. And uh, welcome to a Hope in the Lord broadcast. And we hope that you've been praying for us this week and hope you had a good week. And we're going to be uh, continuing our series of sermons through the book of Daniel. We're in Daniel chapter 1, really in, uh, in line with our end time prophecy sermon series. Uh, you know, because. Uh, Daniel and his buddies were uh, taken as slaves uh, by the Babylonian Empire back to Babylon after the invasion of Israel. And for 70 years, uh, they stayed there and served the Lord in the midst of a uh, heathen nation and culture. And uh, so we'll be looking at the book of Daniel for the next several weeks. And we hope that you'll always have your word, the word of God, the Bible in front of you. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, I usually sing and have music, but it's got to the point where you got to copyright everything and this and that. So we're just going to stick to the word of God. And in, in the future, is, uh, whatever the Lord has, we'll uh, uh, go with it from there and see how God leads. Father, bless the reading of your word. Honor Jesus. Bless anyone that's doing anything for you. And Lord, we pray that you'll save the soul nearest to hell, Jesus. And we pray that you'll bless us who are headed to the pretty white city with your wisdom, love, your power. And we pray, Lord, last of all, that you will bless this broadcast. And may it be one of many uh, wells of spiritual encouragement for the people of God that are saved by thy grace and washed in your blood, Lord, uh, on their journey to heaven. And we uh, thank you. Uh, bless them for stopping by. And we pray that you'll keep your hand on us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, let's get right into the book of Daniel. Right back into the book of Daniel. Daniel chapter 1. And uh, get my notes out here where I can see what I'm doing. I want to look at verse 9. Uh, and read down through verse 21. And then I want to um, speak on this tonight. tonight. Uh, conquering compromise in the last days and we definitely live in a nation if you live in america of of compromise uh many folks are uh they say that 75 percent of our nation says they're born again christians but by the way we act and live and talk and and every other arena of life we uh don't show it <laughs> And we need to, uh, we're talking about in our commitment to uh, living biblical morality and standing against immorality of any and the vices of the world and practices of the world. So let's get right in and see how Daniel and his buddies, they stood for God in a, a way uh, more heathen land than we live in America. And America is definitely not. We are not a Christian nation. We may have been founded on Christian principles and that. Well, we're way far from that. Um, and uh, so we need to be real about things. We're living in a, a nation of compromise, a nation that uh, has turned its back on God for many years. Now, God has blessed America in spite, and I believe uh, that he's blessed us because of the saved amongst the people that are living for God. And so uh, let's look at verses uh, nine. Now God had brought Daniel into favor and tender love with the prince of the Enoch. And the prince of the Enoch said unto Daniel, I fear my Lord, the king who have appointed your meat and your drink. So uh, for three years, they're in a three year uh, training program by the king. Uh, if you read the previous verses, um, the king has is taken a bunch of these Jewish young men put him in one of his uh, universities of training and he's teaching them their customs and their language and how they do things and all of that. And Daniel and all of them have just decided we're not going to compromise our, our religious duties to God uh, in spite of the king or anybody else. That's what's going on here in these verses. Um, and 
for why should he see your faces worse liking than the children which are of your sort? Then sh shall you make me endanger my head to the king. So this is serious business here. Uh, the king uh, wanted uh, these Jewish uh, young men to eat his meats and drink his wines and all of that. And uh, the meats that he was offering them to the Jewish young men were unclean animals and they couldn't do it. So everybody's head could be, they could be put to death for this serious offense in this kingdom. Uh, then said Daniel to Melchior, whom the prince of the Enochs had set over Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Now this is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and uh, their names have been changed. And that's one of the things I'll get to in a minute by the Babylonians. I mean, when they took them captive and took them back to Babylon, they, they wanted to change it. They wanted to make them into Babylonians. And uh, they never could do that. Well, if you read the book of Daniel, you'll find that out. Prove thy servants, I beseech thee, ten days, and let them give us pulse to eat and water to drink. And I ate this pulse one time when I pastored in Lancaster. I can't find it. Um, <laughs> if I ever do find it, I'm going to order me some. It's a, a vegetarian diet. Uh, then let our countenance be looked upon uh, before thee and the countenance of the children that eat of the portion of the king's meat. And as thou seest, deal with thy servants. So Daniel says, look, for 10 days, let us eat our pulse according to our, our uh, dictates of our God and his word uh, and the dietary rules. And you let yours eat theirs and whoever wins, wins out. Let's see who's the most well-favored at the end. Um, so he consented to them in this matter and proved them 10 days. He said, that's a fair deal. And at the end of 10 days, their countenance appeared fairer and fatter in flesh than all the children which did eat the portion of the king's meat. So God honored their, their uh, commitment to him. And thus Belshazzar, Melzar took away the portion of their meat and the wine that they should drink and give them pulse. Notice these young men, everyone likes to bring up is social drinking all right. It's never been all right for God's children. And you can't get any amens on Facebook unless you type it in there. It wasn't all right in Daniel's day. It's not all right today. <laughs> and um, as for these four children, well, of course, these were young teenagers, but he called them children. God gave them. Notice God. God is in the midst of their, uh, in their Babylonian captivity. God gave them knowledge. That's what we need to pray for. Knowledge and skill and all learning and wisdom. And Daniel had understanding in all visions and dreams. And we're going to find out that uh, God gave him these abilities because he was going to foretell the future of the world and kingdoms. Now, at the end of days that the king had said he should bring them in, then the prince of the Enix brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Now remember, ne Nebuchadnezzar ends up getting saved later on. And the king communed with them, and among them all was found none, like Daniel, and this is the name, the Babylonian names, but Hananiah, Mishael, and Azra of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Therefore stood they before the king. So uh, after just 10 days, they've been promoted to stand before the king. So it pays to do the right thing in the midst of, uh, of political and religious and other compromise. It pays to keep doing right. And in all manners of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them 10 times better. Notice the uh, test was 10 times, and now they are 10 times better than all the magicians and astrologers. Uh, then we're in all his realm. And, and, and Daniel continued even unto the first year of King Cyrus. He served 70 years, and he ended up becoming the vice president of this great empire that you can study about in the history books. So we see that God looks after his own people here. God uh, does not slumber. He does not sleep. If God be for us, who can be against us? If God, if you're with the Lord, you are in the majority, regardless if you're outnumbered and regardless of the crowd. And God will bring you into favor and tender love uh, in the midst of being surrounded by compromise if you stand and do what's right. 
you know, Daniel wasn't a mean spirited person. He just, he was sweet in his demeanor, but he had a determination in his spirit. And I believe that's what we need today, the purpose in our heart. And people will honor that when they see you uh, trying to live for the Lord. I have a, fr uh, uh, I guess you call them work friends. And this, uh, and, and this one fellow was saying uh, jokingly uh, mean things to me last night. And this guy just stood up. I guess he took it the other way. And he came to my defense and he just called this guy a dirty name. And he said, I'll tell him for you, Cordell, because I know that you don't want to say words like that. Now, listen, that man has not known me but three weeks. And, and I believe, and not because I'm better than them, I believe that he's seen that even though I'm not perfect by no stretch of imagination, you can ask my wife, you can ask anybody that knows me. I have my shortcomings and everything. But in my heart, I desire to do the right thing. And God will honor that. We see in verses 9 through 10 that God looks after his own. In verses 11 through 13, 14, God always honors when we uh, commit ourselves to put uh, his principles to test. Notice uh, uh, this. They offered, uh, Daniel said, give us 10 days of our God's pulse, vegetarian diet, and and whoever, and let your uh, ones that you're training uh and the king's academy eat the king's meat offered to idols and the ones that win that do the best in terms of their healthy countenance and all of that and that they will be the winners and of course daniel shadrach meshach and abednego were the ones and the other jewish uh, young men that didn't eat the king's offered meats offered to idols and drink his wine they refused to they were more healthier than the other that did partake of the king's uh mix compromising meal and uh and drink we see here that uh, we should not mingle or mix with heathen practices worldly practices we should be separated unto the lord um we should uh be faithful and concentrated and consecrated to the lord you know restrictions from god are for our benefit Dr. Adrian Rogers said, God gave us 10 commandments because he knew if we disobeyed those 10, it would hurt us. We need to look at God's restrictions and his moral laws as for our benefit. And we should obey the Lord. We should not be rebels. Um, we, uh, we see that God has a peculiar people, those that are saved by grace, those who have repented and asked Jesus in their heart. Uh, we are peculiar to the Lord. He has given us uh, biblical practices and mandates and laws to obey. He has given us a place to serve him. We, uh, we are to dress according. And we are to uh, worship according to his uh, principles. Uh, but all of it is because we are to be a holy people unto the Lord. I remember Dr. Jack Laster used to say this, holiness is a Bible word. <laughs> holiness is not a man-made word that's that's a god word god said be ye holy for i'm holy we are we are his uh that word peculiar people in first peter 2 9 means god's personal private possession um that's pretty good yes made to be god's personal private possession to be god's personal property to be god's private property and by the way we are, are his purchased property we are purchased by the Lord, by his precious divine blood that he poured out on Calvary, the blood of the lamb. We are his claim. We are his personal great price. Uh, we, are, we have no right to share ourselves with this world. We have no right to share ourselves with the flesh of this world and the devil. We are to refuse their call. And we are to not be led away by their sinful and questionable and uh, reproachable uh, addresses to entices to us. We are not to support or fellowship with wicked endeavors, regardless of the whole world says it's right. If God says it's wrong, it's wrong. And that's where the line is being drawn. 
It's been, especially in America for the last 40 years. Uh, there, hey, listen, the line's been drawn in the sand, folks. So it's time to take a stand for what for what is right. And so we are to honor God. And when we honor God, God honors us. We are not to conform to this world, but we are to transform ourselves into the world of God, the glory world. And that is done by no compromise. Do you know for 70 years, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they did not yield. They did not default. They did not compromise. They lived for God. And they had their tests. Daniel was thrown into the lion's den. But God gave them lockjaw. <laughs> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we will not bow to your big doll, Nebuchadnezzar. And he said, you either bow like the whole world's doing, or I throw you in a fiery furnace. They said, well, uh, whether God deliver us or not, we're not bowing. And they threw, he threw them into the fiery furnace. And do you know who showed up for them three, uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? The Lord Jesus Christ. We see here that God blesses obedience and God honors dedication. You know, this school was for three years and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood the test and God promoted them. They decided to serve God and to serve the Lord. And because of that, they were 10 times better than the others that did not go with Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So we see here in closing, as we continue to study the life of Daniel, and Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, we're going to see God. Uh, just uh, the book of Daniel is such a great prophetical book. Uh, many of the prophecies of Daniel have already been fulfilled, and many are yet to come. Uh, you can't properly understand the book of Revelation without a proper understanding of the book of Ezekiel and the book of Daniel. So that's why we, the Lord led us to study the book of Daniel. Can I say in closings that uh, uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and the other Jewish young men who were took captive into the land of Babylon for 70 years, they had their problems. Think about it. They were many miles away from home. They had a new home. They had to learn new knowledge. They had a new diet, which they refused. They had new names. You know, uh, if you were to study the names of Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, Daniel's name means judge, but Nebuchadnezzar said, no, our God Baal will protect you. <laughs> Notice how Nebuchadnezzar was trying to change their identity to his false gods. Uh, Shadrach's name means gracious, but uh, he changed and Nebuchadnezzar said, no, your name's not gracious. It's going to be while you hang around my kingdom, uh, God, uh, and you're going to be inspired by the sun talking about the sun god yeah. i don't serve that sun up in the sky i serve the s-o-n in the glory world right. uh shadrach meshach names means equal uh, he said no not equal your name belongs to our false god oka see how he was trying to change their identity by changing their names mm -hmm. abendigo's name means helper but he said no your helper is our false god nego all of this didn't change them one bit. They said, you can change your name. That's not going to change what we're doing. It's not going to change our heart. So we had, they had their problems in the land. But they also, they had purpose of heart. And so I just want to encourage you uh, to dedicate yourself to the Lord. I like what Dr. Joe Arthur said. People said, well, Joseph ended up in Egypt as a slave and ended up in prison for something he didn't do. He ended up in a God-forsaken land. And Dr. Joe Arthur said, if you're a child of God, no matter where you end up, you're never forsaken. There's no such thing as being in a God-forsaken place if, if you have the Lord in your heart because God is there. If you study the life of Joseph, about every eight verses, it says, and the Lord was with Joseph. And that's what we need to dedicate ourselves to the Lord, commit ourselves to the Lord, and commit the consequences to the Lord, uh, commit ourselves to purity and uh, his desires in faith and obedience, and God will promote us from heaven. You know, all promotion comes from the Lord. 
And we see, yes, they had their problems in the foreign land like we do, but they purposed in their heart to serve the Lord. It didn't matter what their neighbors thought. It didn't matter what their coworkers thought. It didn't matter who they went to school with thought. It, it didn't matter what the political leaders thought. They didn't even care what the king thought. They did it out of res in a respectful way, but they said, look, we're not going to serve this stuff in you. We're going to serve the Lord. And because of God, that God promoted them from heaven. Remember, God always honors commitment to Christ. God always honors our God experiences, our excellence with God, and our endurance with God. We need to endure. We need to do right, even though we don't feel like it physically or emotionally and all that other stuff, we need to stick to the guns, stick to the old school because old school will get it done. And then that's it. You know, I always used to wonder, wonder why the, under the preaching I got preached under, it, even at Bible college, was always tough preaching. I mean, I mean, I mean, bro, I mean, you. Uh, it wasn't for the weak and hard. It was like being at Paris Island. You don't make Marines being uh, treating them like wimps. And I mean, I always wondered when I got saved in Spartanburg, every preacher I was under until I went to Bible college was just fire, just fire. And you call it in your face, whatever you want to call it. Uh, they were preaching the Bible right the way it is. and that, No cutting corners. Went to Bible college and five days a week for three years, we had men of God come from all over the country and they'd come in there and just bang away. Uh, I mean, and but you know what? Now I look back at it. I'm old now, 58. I've been through, phew, Lord have mercy. I, I would not be here today if they wouldn't have made me tough back then. Y'all know what I'm talking about, I believe. Yes, we need, we need, thank God for the school of hard knocks that God takes us through. And, and Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they stood the test of time because they were tough in their commitment with God. All right, I hope you enjoyed that today. Next Sunday at 6 p.m., right here at the Hope of the Lord broadcast. Uh, this is our most watched broadcast the other Word for the Word broadcast comes on seven days a week. I'll be on tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, back in the Gospel of John, going verse for verse. Uh, shout out to Brother Mark, even though he's going on vacation from Virginia. Uh, I sent him a list of the daily scriptures running through all week. And even on vacation, he's going to be sending us resources for me to develop the lessons for those daily broadcasts. Shout out, Brother Mark. One of these days, if the Lord blesses me, uh, in a big way, I'm going to remember what you did for us here at a word from the word broadcast. Okay, now it's time uh, for uh, me to give the look. I don't give my addresses and stuff out except on this broadcast. You can call it an offering, a love offering. If you decide that you want to be a, a, a blessing to my wife and I as we minister the word of God, or you want to send a love offering uh, to help us out in any endeavors we want to do for the Lord, like buying books to study on and on, worship music, whatever the case, this is your opportunity. This is the time that you can sow a seed financially into our, our outreaches on Instagram, uh, which is still slow going. <laughs> Everything we're doing, it seems to be slow going, slow in growth. But I'm on Instagram daily with uh, quotes from my study of the book of Revelation. Also, uh, we're on YouTube. My wife does that. Only puts the Hope of the Lord broadcast on. Uh, we have our international prayer meeting every Tuesday night. That'll be up to this Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're on YouTube. You can find us. Just type in Clay Cordell. Subscribe. It's all right there. Clay Cordell 62 on Instagram and also right here on Facebook Live uh, seven days a week. And I'm off the next three days, so I'll be coming on at different times like 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Okay, here's our addresses. If you would like to send an offering to help us in uh, whatever endeavors, a love offering, uh, get your pen out and your paper. The Cordell's 119 Terry, T-E-R-R-Y Avenue, 
Inman, I-N-M-A-N, South Carolina, 29349. Uh, so that's 119 Terry Avenue, Inman, South Carolina, 29349. Also, our P.O. Box, P.O. Box address, hashtag 211. That's hashtag 211. Uh, 3740 Boiling Springs Highway, Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. That's hashtag 211 or pound sign. 3740 Boiling Springs Highway, Boiling Springs, South Carolina, 29316. And some of you use Facebook Pay, which we have a secure account set up on there. If you would like to send the offering, we get it instantly. That way, our information is already on the secure line. You go through your profile pic, scroll down to Facebook Pay, enter your information in your offering and send it. As soon as you send it, I'll get a notification. We get two notifications and we'll send you a notification letting you know we received your offering. All right, let me go over here and see if we have any prayer requests or praise reports. Let me get my drink because I'm thirsty. I was going to sing a song today, but I'm just so tired and I just uh, don't have the energy today. Yes. Don't you mean next Sunday at 7? Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. It's next Sunday at 7 p.m. We used to come on at 6, but uh, I'm just uh, barely surviving making it to church on Sunday morning. Praise the Lord. All right, let me get over here and see what's happening. Um, the cat. Good to have everybody from Virginia, South Carolina, different people. They are on message now. Appreciate it, Brother Mark. Praise the Lord for the opportunity to read here and share his word. Uh, make sure you uh, share our broadcast. Let folks know we're on here. We appreciate it. I cut the top of my head off right there. And uh, so I hope you're enjoying the verse for verse through the book of Daniel. And uh, by the way, uh, the, the commentary showing you how people's offerings help us. Uh, uh, the commentaries that I'm using for the uh, book of Daniel was given to me by uh, one of the boss men at work. I just walked by him one day and he said, I need you to come by and see me uh, on the way home. We get off and I got something to give you. And I walked up and he gave me $40, said, buy you some books or something. I said, I appreciate that. Shout out to him. He watches our other broadcast. Uh, he may be watching this one. I don't know. Or he may watch it later. A lot of fox, a lot of foxes, a lot of folks, a lot of folks watch this broadcast later on into the night and in the bar and throughout the week. Uh, so by you sharing this broadcast, it helps uh, get me out there. I, I mean, I could give cards out to people and everything, but I just work all the time. And I uh, have uh, most of my days off are spent sleeping and resting. Uh, update on my job, uh, learning how to back those trailers, those 53 foot trailers into Trader spaces all night long is getting better. Computer uh, skills are getting better, but it's stressful. Uh, but I'll be all right. I'll be all right. But I appreciate you praying for me. I know some of you pray for me. I have gotten a little bit of raises and stuff, so I appreciate the extra money. And we're supposed to be getting some more raises, so I don't know. We'll see what God, God has for us. Uh, but God is our source, and God is our provider, but he provides through people. He can choose not to, but he has chosen to use people. Like this morning, um, I gave my tithes and offering to the Lord, like I do every Lord's Day, like millions of Christians do around the world. And uh, I remember one preacher in Spartanburg saying one time, I've, I've never heard anyone on their deathbed ever regret giving Jesus their heart. Well, I want to add one more to that. I've never met anyone that pays their tithes and offerings to the Lord say, I regret doing that <laughs> because you're not going to regret it. Amen. Uh, we was talking about it at work last night. I said, there's one thing about it. I know what 10% is, but you know, you ought to give more than 10% because the more you give, the more the Lord will bless you. And uh, I do that. And uh, somehow we make it. Uh, of course, we do have a few, uh, you know, my wife's hearing, I think this is our third or fourth hearing on her social uh, disabilities coming up. So hopefully she'll get approved for that. No regrets, Brother Mark. That's it. No regrets. You're not going to ever hear me regret about it. You know, God's been good to him. He's blessed me in spite of me. And he's been better to me than I deserve. So I give God all the glory. Any good that's in my life, he gave it there. He put it there. 
All right, anybody else have a praise report before I close it out? Hope to hear from you soon. Mark, have a good vacation, brother. Are you going with your buddy Tom? Amen. Tom saved by the grace of God. He, I believe he goes to Assembly of God somewhere up where he lives. He's retired from the post office. And him and Mark have been buddies for years. And they all, when I pastor in Virginia, Mark and him used, I think his name, Brother Tom, used to go on vacations, you know, different sites around the world, the country. And uh, we hope you have a good time on your vacation, brother. Appreciate you helping us out on our lessons for the Word for the Word broadcast. All right, I guess everybody's silent now. I'm moving on out. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, yes, brother in Christ, yes. Uh, we pray you'll bless Mark and Tom, protect them wherever they go on their vacation. You know, give them safety of travel. Uh, give them plenty of money to have fun and provide whatever they may need that they didn't know that they would need and protect them with your angels. We pray for every, the broadcast that you will bless it. And we pray you'll bless anybody that's doing anything for you because that's all that matters anyway in the end. And I pray, Lord, that God, you will just uh, touch and bless and move. Uh, and every uh, request we've laid out before the Lord, like my wife's disability hearings coming up and other things that are going on. Uh, we pray for that young man at work that asked me to pray for him for a, a, a good woman. He wants to settle down. I pray you'll send him one that loves the Lord. And then, Lord, I pray, God, that you will bless uh, everyone out there. Bless our political leaders, which you tell us to do in the Word of God. And you also tell us, uh, Lord, to pray for one another, which we do. And I pray now that you will lay your hands on us and bless us to be a blessing. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, till tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, cut your notifications on. It'll let you know when I come on. We'll be back in the Gospel of John. And uh, go with God, as Brother Mark always says. No better person to go with than God. And uh, we wish all of you the best. God bless.